This sermon is entitled, What Faith Is and What Faith Is Not. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 13 reads, How long wilt thou forget me? O Lord, forever, how long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart, daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord. My God, lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ. And there are lots of false prophets out there that are taking the concept of faith and they're, they're distorting it and they're changing what it is. And see, people do this because they're unsaved and they're going to hell. So they have to do anything they can to try to damn as many souls to hell with them. And the false prophets out there, all of them add works to, to, to faith. And then when it comes to verses like John 3.16, they say stuff like, well, in the original Greek, the word believe was in the, the present tense. So you have to, or the continual something, whatever tense. And they use all these Greek words. And they're trying to basically imply that you have to keep believing. These unsaved Calvinists, that's what they do with verses that say believe. They say you have to keep believing because God will make you keep believing. When what this is, is is just a person who's not trusted Christ alone, so they're trusting in themselves to continue in, continue in the faith. It's still about it's still all up to them. It's not about Jesus dying on the cross. It's up to them. And they will say stuff like, "Well, if you stop believing, you either lose your salvation or you were never saved to begin with." When the Bible has lots of warnings about people that stop believing and they're still saved. Okay, so you got to watch out for these unsaved devils out there that are going to try to change what faith is. Now, they'll tell you that faith is a lot of things, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. But let's go into what the Bible says faith is in the biblical sense. Let's take a look at where this, where it's actually defined in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, we see in verse 1 what faith is. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, what we get from this is that true faith is assurance. It's to have a full confidence that something is true. And when you believe on Jesus Christ, you're trusting him to save you. You're trusting that he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried. He rose again. You're trusting that that actually happened and that that's enough to save you. You're putting your full assurance in him. And it tells us that's what faith is. Okay, You're actually hoping for something. Okay, You haven't seen heaven, so that's why faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now, the word faith is defined also in Luke chapter 16. And it's, it's basically to be persuaded that something is true. It's not complicated. Faith is something that's cognitive. It's, it's mental. It's something that's noetic. And it's, you do it with your mind. And see, these unsaved devils out there will say that well, what I teach is just mental assent. And they make it out like if you agree with something, that's, that's faith, and then that's not, it's not good enough for them. Because they don't, want, they don't believe on Christ. And they can call it whatever they want to call it. Okay, Faith is faith. And the reason why these people mock the true d- version of faith is because they're lost. They're adding works. They won't simply believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. They call it easy believism. But see, what they're trusting in is their works, their good deeds, their obedience, their repentance, anything they can do to try to save themselves, that's what they're trusting in, and it's going to send them straight to hell, every last one of them. You can't add one thing to what Christ did, because that's unbelief. And a lot of these things I've already listed are what faith is not. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So, in Luke chapter 16, we see the example of the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, where we have a we have people burning in hell here, and then they're desiring for you know a drop of water. And then we have a question asked. Let's jump down to verse 20. Let's see. All 
All right, 29, it reads, let's, let's back it up to verse 28. It says, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went into them from the dead, they will repent. Now, obviously, repent means to change your mind. It's not talking about turning from sins. But see, in the next verse, it tells us what it means to believe. It says, And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now, obviously, we're trying to get people not to go to hell here. And he basically says, if they, if they would have heard the, the gospel, okay, the the gospel message of Jesus Christ rising from the dead, if they would have simply have been persuaded that that's true, you know, for them. That's the same as belief. You know, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You're persuaded that Jesus Christ will give you everlasting life. You believe on the Son. And it's as simple as that. It's not complicated. It's not continual. At the moment you believe on Jesus Christ, you're saved forever, 100%. And it doesn't matter if you believe a minute later or not believe a minute later. You're still saved. Okay? It is simply being persuaded that something is true. That's why he uses the word persuaded. Okay? Now, that's what faith is. Faith is basically just agreeing with something that it's true. If somebody tells you their name, when you believe them, you're, you're just saying, I believe you. I agree. You're telling me your name is blah, 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 Billy Bob. Well, I agree with that. That's the same as faith. It's, 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 there's no difference. It is very, very, very simple. And these, these unsaved people out there, they don't like this. They don't want to be saved. They don't want to receive the gift of eternal life. They don't believe on Christ. So what do they call faith? They make up all these different definitions for it. There's, there's different types of faith, like saving faith, demonic faith, head faith, heart faith. They say that faith is obedience. No, faith is not obedience. Faith is simply trusting. Okay? They'll say that faith has to have works. And they go into James too. these unsaved bastards out there. They'll say that faith... I've heard one person say that faith was living. Faith was living. It means you have to live out. You have to live it out. What does that even mean? Okay, it means nothing. There are other people that say that um, faith means submission, or like surrendering your life over to the lordship of Christ. That's not what faith means. Okay, and these people are a bunch of liars. And they don't believe on Christ. And how can you believe on Christ if you've redefined what faith is? Okay, it, you can't. Okay? So, we need to watch out for these idiots and these false prophets that are perverting what faith is. Like I said, faith is simply being persuaded that something is true. Even in something as simple as like Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If a person says, well, there's more to it than that, they haven't believed. Okay? It's just, it's, it's, the, the, real, the real issue here is not really even what it means to believe. The real issue is, have you believed on Jesus Christ or not? That's what it boils down to. And all these people out there that are changing what faith is, and they're, they're making it into something else, those people are unbelievers. The ones that Hey, they're persuaded that something is true. They're persuaded that the one rose from the dead. Those people have believed. And you hear people all the time say stuff like, well, you can't just believe the facts. Well, I thought whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. I thought that's just believing facts. It depends on what the facts are. If the facts are the death, burial, and resurrection for salvation, then yes, you can believe the facts. Just watch, We need to watch out for these these. these, these false prophets out there. See, see, the number one thing Satan attacks is the concept of faith. I mean, I know tons of people out there that understand the gospel, but they just don't, they don't know what faith is, and they haven't believed. That's what Satan's attacking, because faith is the means by which 
we receive the gift of eternal life. So that's what Satan wants to keep people from doing. So of course he has to attack the most staple theological and soteriological issue, which is faith. He has to attack that and change it and pervert it because that's what's getting everyone saved is when they trust Jesus Christ for salvation. So faith is being persuaded that something is true and faith is not anything else that has to do with works or self or continual, anything. And that's how you can differentiate between false prophets and true servants of God is a false prophet their salvation is all about them and the true servant of God their salvation they're trusting in Jesus alone and that's it and they're not trusting in their works they're not trusting in their good life that's true faith it's it's as simple as that that's all I have dear God thank you for giving us your clear word thank you for allowing us to see what it says bless the listeners I ask all this in Jesus name amen